almost every computer has a fan somewhere just on the case, and it's designed to cool the entire computer. This is an important part of keeping your system running at peak efficiency, because what's happening is you have fans, perhaps multiple fans inside of your case, that are pulling air in, cold air in from the front, sending it into the middle where it heats up, and then sending the warm air out. If at any point, this, this ecosystem of airflow begins breaking down. If you've got the fan that's stopping or you've got the airflow, the intake that's coming into your computer, and that intake is causing a problem, well, that's another issue. You want to be sure you always have good airflow there. The motherboard layout also becomes pretty important. Where you put components on your system is also something you should consider because you want the airflow to go by those components and cool them down very efficiently. If those components are in the back or they're not near where the fan is going, then they may not be getting a lot of airflow and therefore may be a little warmer than what you want. You also want to look at where you're putting the different components and how you're wiring things up. The wires themselves can get in the way of the airflow. So make sure that everything is bundled up tightly. Make sure that you've got things moved off to the side, if at all possible, so the air can flow through very well. Every case is different. Every size of and the way that the motherboards are put in are different. And the fans themselves are different. Some fans are very, very loud. You may be working with a computer that's just too, too loud to have in a workspace. There are options available. You can find third-party fans and third-party components and cases that are designed just to keep things quiet. And that's one thing that you might want to consider if you're in a work environment like mine, where while I'm recording this, I have to make sure things are very quiet and that you can't hear the fans and the other components and things that I have in my office. Therefore, I'm able to make sure that I've put together a system that's going to be as quiet as possible. I have special cooling. I'm doing this on a laptop, which is already quiet, and keeping things at a perfect optimal level to be able to record this particular version of the video. And if I was to put a computer in place that was very loud, I wouldn't be able able to do that. So just another thing to think about when you're trying to figure out the type of case fans and the type of environment that you want to have whenever you're cooling off these personal computers. I have a system that's designed as a server that I took the top off of. It's very flat. And because it's very flat, it has multiple fans right in the middle of the system that are pulling air in from the front and sending it off right to the motherboard components that are right here and into the, the power supply component that's right here. Much more of fans, by the way, over here where my particular hard drives are and my particular CPUs are than over here in the other part of the system. So it's really been designed to pull all of the air through as much as possible to go through this system. You may also find that you have different size of fans inside of your computer. There's many different fan specifications. There's different sizes. There's different speeds. Some are set up to do variable speeds. So the CPU knows when it's getting hot. There are sensors inside of your computer that may know when things are getting hot, and they'll turn the fan on to go just a little bit faster. And of course, that means there's different noise levels. I mentioned that you can buy third-party components and change the way they sound. Not all fans are built exactly the same. You may want to buy a fan that pulls through just as much air, but has components in there and bearings in there that are much quieter that you can use. There's also, these days, a, a much more interest in doing liquid cooling. I'm seeing more and more of this come about. You're literally taking coolant, sending it through your computer to cool things off. This is exactly the same thing you have in your automobile, for instance. You have some antifreeze coolant in there, and you're sending it through all of your systems inside of your car to keep things cool. You generally only see this on higher end systems, on systems that you're really even overclocking the system. Some gaming systems where you have the CPU always pumping as hard as it can go. Uh, liquid cooling, really, you can see it operating there. So anytime you have a system where you are really taking the system and using it just as fast, taking those components and really driving them hard, then liquid cooling may be the best choice. The way this works is that you have inside of your computer a reservoir, a tank of that coolant solution that you then have a pump connected to, and it pushes that coolant onto your motherboard. And you can see all of these, these copper metal pieces where all of our coolant is going in between. It heats up the coolant and then sends that heated coolant off to a fan that then sends the coolant around like a radiator does in a car and cools off the coolant so that it can then go back into the reservoir. And it, then it repeats the process over and over again. This is usually much more efficient than sending 
air through your system because it's going right to the components themselves and moving that heat from the component into your cooling liquid. And if you've got a system that is always going to be on and going very fast and you're doing something very specific, a, a liquid cooling system like this may be for you. Let's review some of these concepts about cooling our computer off. Our first question is, what ensures a good connection between components, especially in a cooling system, and especially between something like a CPU chip and the heat sink that you're going to put on top of it? Well, that, of course, would be that thermal compound, that thermal paste that you would put between both of those. The next question is, what should you check to ensure an optimal cooling of your computer case? That's a good question. How can we really tell if we're getting good cooling? We need to check then that we're getting good airflow and that we're getting good air intake and that the air is coming out exactly the place that it needs to come out right next to our fan. And lastly, what heat dissipation component can be found on processors, adapter cards, and other motherboard components? You pull up in any computer, you're bound to see some of these heat sinks, something that we see very common inside of our computers these days. Well, that covers what we need to know on our CompTIA A plus 22701 section 1.5. You now know exactly how our modern computers are able to take all of the heat coming off those motherboards and other components and are able to cool them. If you'd like to watch any of our free A-plus videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.